You say you need to lose weight, but what are you actually doing to lose weight? Alrighty, queens, hopping right into it. Welcome and please take notes. And if you're driving, go ahead and save this episode, revisit and take notes. Today we're talking about how everybody says they need to lose weight. You say you need to lose weight, but what are you actually doing to lose weight or achieve any other fitness goal that you actually want to achieve? There are so many women that I come in contact with that I even did at some point where we say we need to do something for so long before we actually do it. What is holding us back, right? And so today we're gonna talk about the mindset shift that happens, that needs to happen in order for you to do what you need to do to lose weight. The practical strategies that you can use to actually lose weight. And then honestly, like me just telling you more about me and my life and my story. I have a queen named Ro. Y'all actually meet here pretty soon. You're on the podcast, right? And when I first met Ro, like she was that girl. Like she was the kind of girl to say like, hey, like I need to do this, I need to do that. She still does it sometimes, but now she actually has a plan. Before she didn't have a plan. She would just say she needed to do something without actually having to do it. And one thing that she made aware to me that I feel like we all go through is that the steps and the process and the things that we know we need to do feel like so much, like just so much, like a lot, a lot, right? It's like, dang, I gotta like clear my entire fridge to put in only fruits and veggies. I gotta clean my house, get new workout clothes, work out in the gym without hurting myself, but what workouts actually work that I actually feel comfortable doing, what cardio actually, cardios, right? But I don't wanna sweat, I don't wanna be nasty, I don't wanna look like a man, all these different things. And so it's like, what are we actually struggling with is overwhelming ourselves with the idea of all that it takes to lose weight. When I know you heard me list that and realize a lot of that, it doesn't require that, right? And then we hop into the fads of doing juicing and fast and doing acute workouts and all these supplements, like using 10 different supplements every day. It doesn't require all that. It does not. Now, these are things that you can incorporate into your program to achieve that goal, but that doesn't mean you have to have all of those things to that extent all the time to see that, right? To achieve that, to be that, okay? Really... It breaks down to five things and each one has a baby step, okay? So we know how like Dave Ramsey be having his five baby steps to financial peace. Here are my five baby steps to your fitness, your health, your weight loss. First things first, get your mind right. Answer me this. How many times have you started your journey But because of either life, either you got anxious or you got lazy or uninterested or you didn't see the results that you thought you were supposed to see within the time that you were supposed to see them. These are all mindset perspective based things. Number one thing you got to do is fix your mindset, fix your perspective. If you are thinking that you got to go into this knowing everything, knowing all the macros, knowing how protein processes in your body, how carb processes in your body, how fat processes in the body, and all that other stuff. You don't. You don't. Stop overwhelming yourself with all this stuff when you could possibly have the resources to just make the first step. It's that easy. I promise you it is not as hard as what we make it to be. And I said this on a call and I posted it on my Instagram, but I'm gonna say it here again. There are a lot of times where we approach and address these situations like it's a big ocean. Oceans are intimidating. There's a bunch of gigantic animals in there. We can't swim. I I can't swim. I can float. If you can swim, kudos to you. I'm jealous. But it's a big ocean. It's like, how am I gonna tackle an entire ocean? But ma'am, You don't have to tackle an entire ocean. No one asked you to tackle an entire ocean. You only have to tackle a puddle. One that you step in on accident every single day, depending on where you live. But still, 
right? Like it does not require all that. And the thing is, is like a lot of the time we make these things big Atlantic Pacific oceans and they are not that. They are the little muddy puddle that you see in your neighborhood on a regular basis. And once you address it like that, it makes it so much easier to make the first step because you didn't already made it on accident because it's a puddle, something that you can conquer, it's easy. That is not something that you have to worry about at all. So first things first, fix your mindset. Stop going from, oh, everything so much to just making the first step. Next, I would say is to get accountability, community, something like that. Now, I know all this, you're like, this don't sound like working out and fitness and nutrition and all stuff. We're gonna get there. But how many tools, resources, and stuff like that do you have to do that and you're still not using them because of whatever thought process, mindset, and excuse that you create or lack of accountability that you have? Point made, (laughs) okay? My point made. So yes, we can get to that. And yes, that is very important, but I wanna make sure that you actually put yourself in the right position to achieve what you need to achieve, okay? So we already talked about mindset. Now we need to make sure that we have the community and the accountability to get where we need to be. Because baby girl, it is not easy to do this by yourself. It is not easy to go to the gym, consistently do workouts that, especially if you don't work out already, you struggle to work out, you don't really feel like you know what you're doing, and you just end up standing on the treadmill for about 30 to 45 minutes. Yeah, it's not it's, it's not something that you can just push yourself to do. You can and you should, but it's so much easier and it's way better to have accountability and community to be there with you. Accountability and community to show you how to do it. Accountability and community to push you to show you that it's okay if you don't do as great as you think you're supposed to do. It's okay to not feel amazing after this workout or not feel like going, but you showed up anyway. It's okay to have a bad workout, right? Where you go in, you put it in the work, but you feel like all this stuff is too heavy. It's making you feel weak. It probably just means your period is coming around like in the next couple of weeks or something. Okay. But at least you'd have the community and the accountability to know that you're not alone, that you're not the only one struggling with that and that it is okay to be where you're at, but then also give you the tools to handle that in the moment, right? That happens on a regular basis for me. Okay. I was just talking to my boyfriend yesterday and he was like, you know what? Starting February, we're going to ham. Like, you're going to, like, go to the gym. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Because lately, I've just been training. I've been training my clients. I've been teaching the classes. But my own training? Eh, Today's been the first day I've done my own workouts. For me. Not coaching anybody. Yeah. It's the third week of January. Yikes. So, you're not alone. I have my best friend who... We are switching gyms <laughs> to make sure that we work out together, okay? Because she moved and she no longer has access to the gym that we used to go to. And that alone, just knowing that I'm not gonna see her at that gym even on accident makes it less appealing to go to the gym. But knowing that I could possibly see her makes me wanna go. And then also it makes it easier to see her because you know, adulting, life be life, and we don't always have time to see each other and make time for little like bestie dates or whatever we got stuff to do so why not incorporate working out in our lives as a hangout Mm -hmm. accountability community Mm -hmm. i'm telling you it's really nice it's really fun and those are some of my best workouts are when i'm laughing and cackling in between sets and literally dying at the end of a set uh, maybe some squats or something, and we make eye contact from across the gym looking like, girl, struggling, okay? But again, in that moment, I know I am not alone, and so does she, right? That, like, it's not going to be easy for everyone, and it's not. So, again, first things first, mindset. Fix that, please, and we will talk about that in a little bit more depth in a second. What if I told you I could give you the secrets to being fit and fine forever? Well, girl, I got you. 
Everything headquarters is the healthiest and the most empowering community in black girl fitness, period. And you'll get access to exclusive videos, priority access to events, and so much more. So all you have to do is watch, apply, and get on. Sounds good, right? Then visit patreon.com slash cqhq or click the link in the description below. Either way, don't miss out on an opportunity to change your life. Number two, get accountability and community for up teen amount of reasons. Maybe some of the ones that I listed already, whether it's just making you feel comfortable, teaching you and showing you how to do what you need to do, slash letting you know that you're not alone in how you feel and what you're struggling with, right? Now, you think it's onto the Zesty stuff? Not yet. Uh -huh. So now we're going to talk about time management. Time, time management, and productivity. Girl, this is how important this is. This is so important. I actually made a full 24-hour daily routine for one of my one-on-one -on -one clients because that was her excuse. That was her struggle, that she didn't have time to do her workouts, that whenever she did go to work or whenever she did come back from helping family or whenever she did do this, she would just feel tired and not have time and not have energy. Ma'am, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. What are you really allocating your time to? What are you actually giving your time to? They say time is money and it's in the currency of yes and no's. What are you saying yes to that you don't need to be saying yes to anymore? Because yeses are expensive. As someone who used to sometimes still is a people pleaser, saying let me think about it is some of the best phrase I ever heard in my life besides anything that is in the bible but i'm telling you let me think about it it's a beautiful scapegoat to say i know if it makes you uncomfortable because then later on you can think about it have your reasons and be like yeah no sorry can't do it no <laughs> right and then while you're just saying let me think about it Learn the power and be confident in your no. You have the right to prioritize yourself, to pour into yourself, and to say no. Sometimes people ask questions assuming you're going to say yes and get offended when you say no, even though the question was a question, which means it gives you an option. Take the option and no. It's okay. Right? And then if you have kids and life and husbands and all those other things, this is, I'm really giving, I'm giving y'all all the game. Okay. So this is literally what I teach all my clients. No matter what program you're in, you will be taught this. Okay. Prioritization. We also talk about block scheduling, but we also talk about prioritization, right? Your prioritization should be you. Well, it should be God, you, your spouse, if you have one, slash your immediate family, your kids, work, the thing that makes you money, and then everyone and everything else. And yes, your family members fall into everyone and anything else. They can be at the top of everyone and anything else, but they are in everyone and anything else. Because if you don't have those top sections like, you know, T's crossed, I's dotted, done, nice, accommodated, all those other things, Nothing else is going to work. Do those everything and anything else is everyone and anything else is going to be stressful because you still have to come back to what actually matters. And so even putting yourself on top, right? You have God, then you. You are a whole part of the fitness, your nutrition, your self-care, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, getting your face done, whatever it is in terms of like your eyebrows, whatever, right? And so the same time that you are quick to make those appointments for your nails, for your hair, for your eyebrows, you should be making appointments for yourself throughout the week to work out. You should be making appointments for yourself throughout the week to meal prep, to cook, to figure out what recipes you want. This is not something that you don't already do. You just need to learn how to do it accordingly to achieve your goals. That is it. This is not rocket science. But if we don't manage our time and we don't actually look at where we are going, we are just going to, that's why you end at end the day feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and just used and abused because everyone got your time but you. That's not cool. 
But if you prioritize yourself properly, right? And this also goes into routines. If you have the routines in place to be able to do this, we talked about that last episode, then you are refueled or fueled period before you even deal with the rest of the day. So by the end of the day, yeah, you're probably tired, but you don't feel used and abused and just like thrown around. Like you feel like, okay, I got stuff done today. I achieved what I wanted to achieve. It's not at the end of the day, you feel tired realizing you did a whole bunch of stuff that was nothing that you actually needed to get done. So time management, please, please understand that. It is actually one of the most important things in fitness that a lot of people don't even talk about is time management. So what have we talked about so far? Number one, baby step number one, fix the mindset, fix your perspective. You are a lot more powerful and capable than you give yourself credit for. It is not that big of a deal. It is a puddle, not an ocean, okay? And number two, what was number two? Oh, accountability and community, okay? Whether it's someone showing you how to do what you need to do or and or um, holding you accountable to do what you need to do and showing you that you are not alone in your journey, okay? That helps so much. We just talked about time management and prioritizing yourself in your fitness journey in your health the way you prioritize everything and everyone else. And so now we're into the juicy stuff. Let's hop into everyone's issue, nutrition. Nutrition is one of those things that like, if you are not willing to actually learn about it it is overwhelming it freaks you out and nine times out of ten you just you're just not really trying to hear about it right you have your own preconceived notions about it and you're not really trying to learn about it because you already think that you know what you know about nutrition even though what you know about what you know hasn't gotten you anywhere you want to be so let's talk about it a few things i want to make sure that you understand about nutrition first of all your body functions like a car your food is your gas what you put in it is what you get out. If you don't put enough food in it, then how do you expect it to run? Now, amazingly, God made our bodies way more complex and interesting than some cars, but that does not mean it is okay <laughs> to push our bodies to be running on E, right? And in that same analogy, if you put the wrong gas in in that car, it's going to be jittering down the street, boy. You don't want that. In the same way for you, if you are putting trash in your body, you probably feel lethargic, tired, exhausted, bloated, nasty, greasy, gassy. Like, it's not it. I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to feel like that on a regular basis. I'm trying to feel nice and relieved. The only time I want to be gassy is in the morning for the morning, you know, excretion, let's call it. But that's about it. And so we need to make sure that we give our body what it's asking for, what it needs. Our body does talk to us. And we will talk about that in point number five. But we need to listen to it, okay? It is asking you to drink water. It is asking you for whole foods, like actual fruit, like actual meat, okay? Like... (laughs) give your body what it needs what it wants and i promise you it's actually a lot easier and it can be a lot more affordable than we get. think about it and yes we know these things yes these things are just like oh, okay yeah, 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 i get it but also don't psych yourself out this kind of goes back to number one don't psych yourself out into thinking that you only have to eat like these super super duper duper healthy things that it tastes disgusting and we're doing nothing but kale salads all day every day No. Yes, have whole foods, eat what you need 80% of the time, eat what you want 20% of the time. That is the rule that I always give my queens. We do a three-part nutrition program. One, discussing macros, right? How, not just how many calories are you eating, but what amount of your calories are protein, what amount of your calories are fats, and what amount of your calories are carbs. Right. And that is solely based on your age, um, your birth gender, your weight, your height and your level of activity. Okay, And so we base your macros off of that. 
based on what you want to achieve, that will change. Based on where you're at in your journey, that will change. But it's very customized to you. So you can... It, even if you're not in any of my programs, being able to use stuff like my fitness pal, um, Nutra Coach, uh, one that I found recently that I thought was super cool. Oh, I hope I remember the name. But essentially, I like this one because the food that you'll scan, it'll rate it and tell you like, hey, like this doesn't have a good grade. Like maybe it's a C and it's orange. But here's a healthy alternative to that. So that way you can find foods that you still like that help you achieve your goals. So that's another good one. But I'll find the name of that and put it at the bottom for y'all. So yeah, that's macros. And then we talk about our calories. Again, based on what you want to achieve, how many calories do you need to eat, right? What is your total daily energy expenditure? How much energy are you using on a regular basis? Going back to the car analogy, essentially, what's your gas mileage for you, right? The gas mileage in a car, we can know what car has good gas mileage and what car doesn't. What is your specific gas mileage? Now, again, luckily, God made us extremely complex and wonderful. So we do have better features than a car. But and so with that being said, based on your body's total daily energy expenditure, aka your body's gas mileage, that will determine how many calories you need to eat to lose weight, to gain weight, to maintain weight, to gain muscle, to look fine and still keep the curves but lose the fat, right? Like the calories is how much you're supposed to be eating. The macros is how much of what you're going to be eating, proteins, carbs, or fats. And then we have the amazing 80-20 rule that tells you 80% of the time, yeah, focus on your macros, eat what you need to eat. And 20% of the time, eat what you want. You want some ice cream? Get the ice cream. You want some Mickey D's? Get it real quick. 20% of the time. If you're going date night with Bay, do it. And even date night with Bay ain't got to be unhealthy. That could still fit into your macros as far as I'm concerned. Right? But we have to make sure that not only do we eat whole and we eat well, but that we just have a better relationship with food. I had a huge issue binge eating. Like, I had to finish the plate. You know the scrape of the bowl at the bottom? That's me every meal. And honestly, that's okay. But the portions I had, (laughs) scraping the bottom of the plate like that and then still feeling the need to snack afterwards and just throwing food in my face. It was honestly stupid. Like, it's ridiculous. And you might need to go to therapy for this one, or maybe it's just some of the journaling exercises I could give y'all. But really diving deep, why do I feel the need to finish every plate? Why do I keep stuffing my face? And for me, part of it was growing up where you had to finish your food. Like, if you didn't finish your food, you're not eating anything else until you finish your food, which isn't a bad parenting tactic. It's not. But... When things like that aren't explained growing up, unintentionally and subconsciously, we take it on as like, this is how I function going forward, period, right? And then why do I just keep stuff in my face, especially when I'm sad? It's because I trust food more than I trust God to make me feel better and solve my solutions. But that's a whole different other topic, okay? But once you understand why you do what you do and what you do wrong, it's so much easier to approach it and it's easier to achieve those things okay if you're looking to get rid of stubborn body fat and be confident in who god's created you to be i want to encourage you to sign up for my one-on-one curvy queen coaching program this is where i help women not only look good on the outside but feel good on the inside by creating a customized nutrition and workout plan walking you through how to overcome insecurities and providing you the tools to make this a lifestyle three years ago i walked past the mirror got a glimpse of how chunky i got and bursted into tears. I knew I was meant for more, and that day I decided to become the woman God created me to be, and you should too. So whether you need accountability to keep you going or a community to remind you that you're not alone, I encourage you to pause this video, click the link in the description below, and sign up and book a call. So yeah, so we said mindset, fix that brain. We said accountability, get that accountability community to show you that you are not alone, to push you to be the best version of you, Make sure you actually manage your time. Y'all, we are wasting time. We are wasting money becoming and doing things for everyone else that we're not supposed to do. Instead of allocating our time properly to what God has actually called us to do, including taking care of ourselves. Okay. Making sure that we 
are set up and prepared at our best to do what he's called us to do. You can't, you cannot, I promise you, if your job or whatever you're called to do requires you to stand up and do a bunch of stuff, if you're not fit, ma'am, you're going to struggle. Okay. So yeah, time management. And then we just finished talking about nutrition, not only actually applying it right, eating whole foods and having a good relationship with food, but also now we're going to talk about some exercise. Exercise, 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 okay? Again, real quick, this is just a quick crash course. Essentially, just work out. Literally, if you start three times a week doing at least 30 minutes of strength training, and then you do about 30 to 45 minutes of cardio the two other days. So let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we do 30 minutes of strength training, and then Tuesday, Thursday, we do 30 to 45 minutes of cardio. Of your choice could be dancing could be walking could be running stair climber if you really about it it's totally up to you do that for at least three months yeah you are going to look so good you're going to see results you will literally feel great okay now with that being said what do we actually do during strength training well before you stop before you end here i will tell you as soon as you like, follow, subscribe, as soon as you comment below which one is the one that you struggle with the most. And if you're on a listening um, software website like Spotify and stuff like that, leave a review, click the bell or whatever button you got to press to know about these episodes every week. And once you're done doing all of that, head to the description below and get a free workout plan. I did it for you. Yes, I did not plan on coming on here and just leaving y'all hanging like that. So go ahead, click the link, sign up and get your free workout plan and execute it. So now you literally have no excuse to not be great. I just gave you the whole framework of what I do with my clients. If you're struggling or you don't believe in yourself to just do this, you know what to do. You literally have no excuse not to be great. Like if by the end of this call, at the end of this podcast, the end of this month, in a few more weeks, if we don't implement this, and, and that's another thing, don't wait to implement this. You know, that's all I got for y'all. Y'all really have no excuse to not not be great. I'm not trying to hear no more excuses, all right? If you got questions, go ahead, comment below and or follow me on Instagram and DM me there. I love y'all. I will see you. Adios. Bye.